lecture we will discuss the sp2 hybridization of carbon and uh, if you look at carbon carbon has a total of 6 electrons so the electronic configuration of carbon is that it has two electrons in the first shell uh, close to the nucleus it has two electrons in the 1s orbital and then it has four electrons in the outer shell it has uh, a 2s orbital which has two electrons a 2px orbital which has one electron a 2py has one electron and the 2pz orbital is empty so when it is about to bond because of attraction of electrons from uh, the other nuclei of other atoms the electrons in the 2s orbital they're going to be attracted in different directions so the octet octet would expand so instead of having two electrons in the 2s orbital it will have just one electron and it would promote one of its electron and that would go into the 2pz orbital now if you look at carbon's electronic configuration the 2s has one electron the 2px has one electron the 2py has one electron and the 2pz has one electron so carbon in total now has four outer orbitals that need electrons so what carbon would try to do it's going to try and grab an electron from some other atom and put it in the 2s orbital an electron from another atom and put it in the 2px uh, another electron would go into the 2py and another electron would be attracted into the 2pz so it's capable of making four bonds it has four orbitals outer orbitals that need electrons uh, to complete the outer shell this is what a carbon atom or at least its outer shell would look like it has uh, it has an s orbital uh, which would be this spherical orbital uh, that you can see over here this spherical orbital has one electron in it so there's one electron in this particular region in this spherical s region then you have uh, then you have the px orbital now the px orbital would lie on the x axis so let me shade that this would be the region where you might have one electron so this is your px orbital then you have the then you have the py orbital which is lying on the y axis so it's this region over here which is going to have one electron so so there's one electron in this particular region over here and then finally you have uh, you have your pz orbital which is this one uh, the pz orbital lies on the z axis so this is uh, these lobes two lobes over here they these are the regions where one electron would be found so let me shade that as well and i will shade the s orbital with red just to highlight that so this region over here this is the area where you would have a very high probability of finding an electron in the s orbital so you have four orbitals each having one electron so this carbon atom is going to try and attract four electrons to fill these four orbitals now in sp2 hybridization the important thing to remember is whenever sp2 hybridization occurs carbon is bonded to three atoms is bonded to three atoms that is one way of, of identifying whether carbon is sp2 hybridized or sp3 hybridized remember in sp3 hybridization carbon is bonded to four atoms although it's going to make four bonds but it would be making four bonds with three atoms for example you have this molecule over here where you have c double bond o and you have hydrogen on two sides now if you look at this molecule carbon is only bonded to three atoms so uh, this is one example you can take the example of ethene as well in ethene both carbon atoms are going to be sp2 hybridized because if you look at these this carbon atom over here this carbon atom is bonded to three atoms and this carbon atom over here is also bonded to three atoms so whenever carbon is bonded to three atoms the hybridization would be sp2 hybridization so that's one way of figuring out whether carbon would be sp2 hybridized or it wouldn't be sp2 hybridized three atoms would try to attract carbon's electrons so carbon has four electrons in uh, in four of its outer orbitals so let's look at this uh, green orbital over here there's one electron roaming around in this green orbital over here and if an atom comes and if that atom needs an electron that atom would try and pull uh, the electron in that orbital towards it but since we are talking about the formation of a covalent bond carbon would not let go of that electron carbon needs an electron in that orbital as well so ca carbon would try and pull that atom's electron towards itself what would eventually happen is because of the pull of the electron the electrons in this green orbital they would be attracted and they would 
go towards the atom over here and they would be found somewhere in this region. When this happens, the electron in this green orbital would no longer go on the other side because it's being attracted by the atom at the other end. So let me rub that off and let's remove the green orbital from this side because the electron is no longer going in this direction. So I'm, I'm removing the green orbital from that side. So you're left with, uh, so there's no longer the green orbital, uh, there's no electron on the other side. So the electron got attracted by the atom and it's now supposed to be found somewhere in this region. Both atoms are pulling each other's electrons. So those electrons uh, would now be found somewhere between the atom and its nuclei and the carbon's nuclei. The electrons would get stuck somewhere in the middle. Finally, a second atom would come and it would need an electron. So let's focus on this orange orbital. This orange orbital has one electron and this electron would be attracted by the second atom. So the second atom would try and attract that electron, but carbon would not let go of that electron. It's going to attract that atom's electron because carbon needs an electron in its orbital as well. So both atoms would try to pull each other's electrons and the electrons would then get stuck somewhere in the middle. They would be found in this area somewhere because both atoms are trying to pull the electrons towards themselves and the electrons would be stuck in the middle. So I'm going to rub off this orange orbital from the other side because the electron would no longer go towards that side anymore. So we can, we can get rid of the orbital from that side. So this, in this way, the second orbital of uh, carbon would be attracted by one of the atoms and it's going to be pulled in that direction. Now in a similar way, a third atom would come and it's going to try and attract carbon's electrons. So, so carbon has this spherical orbital or which has this 2s orbital which has one electron and carbon needs an electron in that 2s orbital. So it's going to attract the electron from that atom. But that atom would also need an electron, so it would attract an electron from carbon's spherical orbital and they're both going to start attracting each other's electrons. And what would eventually happen is that the electron that was residing in this spherical orbital would then be pulled towards that atom and the electrons would be found somewhere in the middle, stuck between the two atoms because both atoms are trying to attract the electrons. So I need to... Uh, so the electron in this spherical region would be stuck somewhere between the these two atoms the nuclei of carbon and the nuclei of this third atom so i need to rub off this spherical orbital because it's no longer going to be in this form so let's uh, rub that off so let's remove all evidence of there being a spherical orbital So I've removed the spherical orbital, the electron in that spherical orbital is now attracted to atom number 3. So this is what's happening, carbon is bonding to 3 atoms, so carbon had 4 orbitals around it, 1 orbital got attracted by one of the atoms, 1 orbital got attracted by the second atom, 1 orbital got attracted by the third atom. So 3 electrons in the outer shell got attracted in different directions, whereas the fourth orbital remains completely unchanged. This is a neater version of what I just explained. The carbon had four orbitals and three atoms tried to bond with it. So when three atoms tried to bond with it, three of its uh, orbitals, three electrons in its three orbitals, they got pulled in different directions. One got pulled in one direction, one in the other direction, and the third in the third direction. The fourth, this blue orbital over here remained unchanged. So I've drawn a neater version of this. So. So these are the regions of the electron densities. Uh, three orbitals got uh, pulled in different directions. They changed their shape. So the new shape is called, uh, it's called sp2 or they call sp2 orbital. So this one is now called an sp2 orbital. This one is also called an sp2 orbital. And this one is also called an sp2 orbital. Whereas the fourth orbital remained unchanged. So this is your p orbital in blue. So one orbital remains completely unchanged when it's bonding to three atoms. Three of the orbitals, uh, they change shape. So it's a trigonal planar shape. If you look at the three sp2 hybridized orbital, they would be a, it would be a fan-shaped trigonal planar, exactly like a fan. 
and all the angles are going to be 120 degrees so you have three sp2 orbitals plus you have one p orbital which remains completely unchanged so if you want to imagine what the shape is this is going to be a fan shaped three orbitals change into a fan shaped uh, uh, arrangement whereas the fourth orbital is uh, out of the plane and into the plane this p orbital that is unchanged is coming out of the plane imagine it coming out of the plane and going into the plane so it's on the z axis